3A3 Hydraulics Lab Practical 3 Pumps in Series and Parallel Pumps are devices which transport, raise or compress fluids. They consume energy, for example electrical energy, to perform mechanical work in moving a fluid. There are three basic types of pump. Centrifugal, axial flow and positive displacement. In centrifugal pumps, the direction of flow of the fluid changes by 90 degrees as it flows over an impeller. In axial flow pumps, the direction of flow is unchanged. A positive displacement pump, meanwhile, moves a fluid by repeatedly enclosing a fixed volume and moving it mechanically through the system. The use of pumps is widespread in civil engineering. They are used in water supply and treatment, aeration, oil and gas extraction, and flood control, amongst many other examples. In this video, we will conduct three experiments in the hydraulics laboratory to assess the performance of a set of centrifugal pumps. The objectives are as follows. Number one, study the performance of a single centrifugal pump over a range of discharges and speeds. Number two, determine the flow versus head relationship when two pumps are placed in series and in parallel, with both pumps operating at one speed. Three, illustrate the effects of cavitation on the performance of a pump. All three experiments will be performed on a dedicated pump bench. This consists of dual centrifugal pumps which can be operated either individually or simultaneously. When operated simultaneously, the pumps can be run in either series or in parallel by adjusting the directional control valve. The pump flow rate is controlled via throttling valve and can be measured via venturi meter with associated mercury column. Manometers are used to measure pressure on both the suction and delivery side for each pump. The power output from the pumps may be varied and can be viewed on the inbuilt tachyometer display. A dynamometer, meanwhile, may be used to measure the brake load of each pump. Generally, a fluid pump cannot start by drawing air. The fluid to be pumped must be introduced into both the feed line of the pump as well as the internal body surrounding the pumping mechanism before starting the motor. This process is known as priming the pump and has been carried out before running these experiments. Part 1. Performance of a single pump In this experiment, we will investigate the performance of a single centrifugal pump under a variety of flow rates and speeds. The relationship between pressure, i.e. the head difference h, and the flow rate, q, will be observed. For a number of different pump speeds, n, the power output, p, will also be observed at various flow rates. The four pump speeds to be analysed are shown on screen. To start, the pump is switched on and the power input adjusted until the desired speed is achieved. The suction and delivery pressures are documented for each pump speed. The venturi meter values are also recorded. These will be used to calculate the flow rate. The spring balance is adjusted to ensure the fixed pointer and the current pointer position on the torque arm are aligned. Once aligned, the torque reading is recorded.
This procedure is then repeated for the other three aforementioned pump speeds. Values for this experiment are tabulated on screen. Please follow the links on screen to download this data and all data for this lab session for use in your report. Please use this data to create the following plots. Total head versus discharge. Power output versus discharge and efficiency versus discharge. In addition, please plot the efficiency values on the total head versus discharge graph to produce ISO efficiency curves. The formulae required to produce these plots are displayed on screen. Furthermore, they can be found in your lecture notes. Part 2. Performance of pumps in series and in parallel. As stated earlier, the experimental rig can be used to run the dual pumps in both series and in parallel by way of adjusting the directional control valve. Both configurations will be used in this part of the lab session to illustrate the differences in performance for the two setups. The experimental procedure is the same as that used in part 1. We will use one fixed pump speed, 2500 rpm, for both configurations. We will start by running the pumps in series. To do so, the control valve is orientated in such a way that water flows from pump 1 through pump 2. The intake valve for pump 2 is also closed. Both pumps, which have been primed, are then started and their speed set to 2500 rpm. Readings for delivery and suction pressure, venturi meter mercury height, and brake force are recorded as before for the two pumps. The pumps are next configured to operate in parallel. This is achieved by opening both inlets and setting the control valve such that both pumps independently push water towards a point of convergence just before the flow control valve. Again, the pressure, venturi and brake force readings are recorded. Results from these experiments are tabulated on screen. Please produce the same plots described in part 1. Total head versus discharge. Power output versus discharge. And efficiency versus discharge for both configurations. Again, also please plot the efficiency values on the total head versus discharge graph. In theory, for pumps in series, the total head provided is the sum of the individual heads for each pump at the discharge of a single pump. For pumps in parallel, the total discharge is the sum of the two individual discharges. The combined flow can be determined by increasing the flow from a single pump accordingly at a given value of H. 
please comment on these statements with respect to the provided experimental data. Are there any discrepancies between the theoretical and experimental outcomes? Part 3. Effects of Cavitation Cavitation in pumps refers to the rapid creation and subsequent collapse of air bubbles in a fluid. These bubbles develop in areas of relatively low pressure when the net positive suction head available is lower than the net positive suction head required. In centrifugal pumps, this occurs on the suction side near to the eye of the impeller. As the liquid accelerates due to impeller rotation, pressure in the fluid increases to above the fluid's vapour pressure and the bubbles collapse. The collapse or implosion of these bubbles trigger intense shock waves inside the pump, causing significant damage to the impeller and or the pump housing. If left untreated, Pump cavitation can cause numerous issues. These include destruction of impeller, failure of pump housing, excessive vibration leading to premature seal and bearing failure, higher than necessary power consumption, and decreased flow and or pressure. In this experiment, we will observe the change in performance of a pump when subjected to cavitation. The effects of cavitation on the efficiency of the pump will be illustrated as the negative pressure on the suction line is increased, thus causing the formation of bubbles within the fluid. A single centrifugal pump, operating at a speed of 3000 rpm, will be used for this experiment. It is first allowed to run under normal flow conditions. The inlet valve is then gradually closed, thus greatly reducing the pressure on the suction side of the pump. At some point, the suction pressure will drop below the vapour pressure of the fluid and the water will hence evaporate, forming cavitation bubbles. The onset of cavitation is noticeably visible and audible. A stream of bubbles may be viewed passing rapidly through the transparent venturi meter. A sound like marbles or gravel circulating throughout the pump and pipes accompany this, and is created by the sudden implosion of bubbles within the fluid. As before, the pump speed, pressure and venturi readings from this experiment are recorded. Data is presented on screen and may be downloaded via the aforementioned links. Please download it and use the prescribed formula to plot flow against suction pressure. Comment on the obtained results and the derived plot paying particular note to the effects of cavitation on pump efficiency. And that concludes this lab practical. Thank you for watching this and the previous videos. Good luck to everyone in submitting your report. We hope to see you in the labs again during your senior sophistry year.